Aloha, I am Andrea Tupola, State House Representative for District 43, and today we have a special guest with us, Danielle Tucker! <laughs> Thank so you wonderful. so much for coming today. I'm sure you've probably heard her voice, but maybe never seen her in person. We wanted to invite her because she has been covering traffic in our district, and we really appreciate it. So, Danielle, how did you get involved with r traffic reporting? Um... It's a kind of a long story, but I'll make it short. Uh, there was a need during, do you remember when the Trade Center came down? I mean, the World Trade Center, and there were restrictions on being able to fly over Pearl Harbor. Mm -hmm. And so they had to take all of the aircraft out of the sky. And uh, before that, the Traffic Management Center was built, but no one used it as a traffic center for reporting. And they said the city and county offered, and our um, radio stations agreed, in return for saying, from the city and county, go phone of the booze, traffic management center. I'm Danielle Tucker. Um, she said it. <laughs> <laughs> that we would be allowed to use the traffic center to report the traffic. And so it works out perfectly because it's live cameras. It's not refreshed webcams. It's live. So I'm watching people do some of the craziest things in traffic. I mean, it's really amazing that we don't have more accidents I know. than we do. I can't even imagine watching all of that every day. I mean, let alone on our little Facebook group, we see like crazy posts of people getting in accidents, but yes. watching it island-wide. Yes, and it's very stressful. I mean, because even though I'm not in it, I feel like I'm in it. I feel like I'm a part of it. And I have the privilege of watching it from above, from the camera angle. I, and I think to myself, okay, if I were sitting in my little car behind all these cars, I, I would be crazed. So that's why to me, finding is an alternate route is critical. But yeah. in the leeward case, I have, no, I have no way of giving you an alternate route, which is really frustrating. Right. So typically her reports always give people a second way of getting to their destination, whereas in our case, there is no second way. Yes. So that's a really big problem. Yes. And so we just want to thank her because I know um, I'm kind of a big fan of Greg, Shawnee, and Davey, but I know they also <laughs> agree with me that Danielle Tucker goes above and beyond what she needs to be doing for her job to make sure that we make it to our destinations as well as have a good day despite uh, Carmageddon almost every single day. <laughs> and it is. I mean, I'm watching because my last camera to the Leeward Coast right now is Waiomea and La'aloa. Ponokai Hale area. Yes. And I can turn the camera around by the uh, Makakilo on ramp to the H1 westbound just as it ends. And then I can see the traffic creeping back. I can watch uh, coming out of Kalailoa trying to get up. It is, when I heard that they're going to expand Kalailoa Boulevard, I thought, Oh, thank goodness, because I, I was at the Solar Impulse Landing, and I had to drive up when there was no traffic out of Kalailoa, and I thought to myself, wow, yeah. just what a difficult trek. So for you, um, getting on our, our Facebook group, I mean, yes. not most news reporters do, I mean, traffic reporters do that, but it's really been helpful for us. So how has your experience been with the Westside Traffic Alert? Wonderful. I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled that you've created that. I mean, it, it makes a huge difference because the police, there are different layers of communication. The call comes in, the officers respond, but by the time the call comes to the public knowledge that we, are, we have access to, an officer could already be there. And when the photos uh, that your followers are snapping and sending, I can see what lane it's in. And sometimes officers don't have time to tell dispatch, well, it's in such and such a lane and we've got the... By the time they've gotten everything set up and done a contraflow and then let us know, it's already been happening for 20 minutes. So with the help of your Facebook page, West Side Traffic Alerts, I get to see immediately from those pictures that you're posting that, okay, this is what's happening. And you are amazing. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I love the group because everyone gets to participate. Yes. So knowing that I, I don't have as much time, but everyone can jump in and be a, a traffic reporter. I mean, the other day she covered a flipped car on Anakuli Ave. I mean, who else would have known unless somebody had posted that? That was, and that was some, to me, it was so early in the morning, and it was an oh, and it slid right into a traffic light, so the crew had to go out and repair it, too. It's... I've, I've got to tell you, you know, we need to slow down. We, we are driving. I know we're stressed. 
I know we're trying to get to our destination. There's not enough time. There's too many of us trying to get there, but we're not giving ourselves the time that we need. And right. I think that's one of the biggest contributing factors to our accidents. It's true. Hashtag drive with aloha. Yeah. <laughs> Pump up the music. Yeah. <laughs> Calm the spirit. <laughs> yes. Yes. If only. Yes, exactly. You're yeah. ex absolutely right. I mean, there's just some things that are unforeseeable and some days where maybe we have to sit in it. And I'm not saying that we're not working towards solutions because we have to be working towards solutions. But it would be helpful if in the rage we find that calm space so that we can actually contribute to society by driving responsibly. Yeah, absolutely. Because there was one case where there was a, an accident, somebody maybe was clicked following too close or, or just looked down at something in the car and then it's a, then it's a rear ender and then there's another person can't stop in time and now we've got a four car pile up and it's blocking multiple lanes. It's a stalled vehicle that you don't realize is stalled. You think it's going to move and you go, but it doesn't, bam, and then we've got an accident. There are just so many times when, you know, I, I always have to think this way. Somebody told me this. If somebody seems to be having a bad day and they're being rude in traffic and they're they're doing things that you say, how can you possibly try to imagine that maybe that person just found out that they need to get to the hospital right away, or maybe that person just lost their job, or maybe that person has some kind of emergency and they just left the house and they're angry. You know, you, we all have to give each other a little bit of a break. Yeah. And that's where I think so that drive with aloha is really, really critical. Right, and I feel like when one thing happens, it spirals into a, events all over the island where it's maybe just bad energy that's being given out where it's just one accident after another. I remember a couple of times when I heard you report, I was like, oh my goodness, this is not a good day. Yes, <laughs> Yeah. A absolutely, and it'll happen in certain hours when all of a sudden it's like, everything's fine, and then bam, 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 bam. I, Wait a minute, everything was okay just a minute ago, and now we're backed up and there's nothing we can do about it. Right, yeah. and so I feel like for me, one of the huge things that I feel like we can do that doesn't cost money is communicate. <laughs> if we could communicate better, if we could get these lines of communication between the city and state going a little bit oh, smoother. Yes. I mean, I don't know how many people have told me they go on the West Side Traffic Alert and then they go catch a movie at Kapolei, or they decide that they're gonna stay home that day, mm -hmm. or that they don't need to go run that air. And I mean, mm -hmm. with just a small piece of communication, it can alleviate a lot. And so if that's what we need to do until those solutions come, then I'm gonna continue to do that so that we can facilitate city and state communication lines for our people of my district as well as statewide. I have something for you that I, you know, the Nanakuli light, the Nanakuli light that everybody says is that light, Tai Fukumitsu from the city and county, he went out and stood at that light because he's part of the traffic light management system. It is set at the longest length it can be set, it's at four minutes. So he can't make it any longer, and you have to remember there are side streets. You can only make that light so long, and then the people on the side streets coming down Nanakuli Avenue are like, well, when is it my turn? Yeah. And, and that's a big problem. So he was there at the light, and the sack and save turn, because right after sack and save, poof, it's like a miracle. Right. All, all of a sudden the traffic's disappeared. And he was watching it, and he was showing people that the turns, I, and I think that um, isn't the plan for there to be an inside lane where you can, like in Kaneohe, they finally put a lane where if you want to turn left to Windward Mall, for instance, you can pull out of the traffic, there's a lane, and then you wait for the flow to change, and then when that changes, you can make your turn. That gets the people trying to turn out of that congestion. Another thing is the buses, love the buses, love the buses, but the buses stop stop and every time they do that's only one lane going in or one lane coming out yep. and for every one minute the bus is stopped it backs up the traffic x number of minutes depending on the length of time i always tell people for every minute there's a stalled vehicle on the h1 freeway eastbound it backs up the traffic seven or eight minutes so compound that and and that that's where we have so many problems and i would say that the the lights timed, not synchronized, but the lights timed from um, Pileokahi all the way to Aoyang have been maxed out at the four minute max. And like she said, the inner streets start to get clogged, but it's only maxed out from 3 to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday. The other days it runs on the regular timer. Um, 
other than that, as far as the, the synchronization, I kind of have a, a question, and probably Ty's going to have to answer that for me, as far as having all the lights be green at the same time, which I think synchronization and the length of the light green is two different things. And so that's a conversation we need to have. As far as buses, DTS and DOT have to get a better relationship going because DOT has jurisdiction over Franklin Highway, but DTS is the one who runs the buses. Mm -hmm. And so when I met with DTS, a lot of them were saying that, you know, we rarely talk with DOT um, regarding like like how we can place our bus stops, they kind of just tell us wh whether we can and can't. That's when we talk about communication between the state and the city and county that's critical because a lot of people don't realize Kalihi Street is a state highway. It's not city and county. So a lot of times you're on a highway and you think, well, this must be the city and county. Well, it's not. It's the state. Right. And so I went and met with DTS, and so that's a big thing that I'm trying to do is at least if I can at least get the second safe um, turnout going. So I've met with all the property owners and we have an idea, so I'm meeting with Ed about it. And so between DTS, DOT and property owners, that's a lot of coordination, but mm -hmm. I feel like that bus stop is the one that's kind of holding up a lot of people because mm -hmm. it's the bus stop that's the heaviest used on Farrington Highway. So there's all these different solutions that we're trying to um, go after, but we just wanted to thank Danielle for all that she's done and for <laughs> almost like being part of our community. <laughs> now that she, she um, reports our traffic, we all tag her like, Danielle, don't forget, there's oh, this thing happening. Yes, so. and please do that. Don't hesitate to tag me so that I have more information so I can pass the word along and, and hopefully you're listening to uh, KINE or KCCN or Crater, one of the three. We just follow her wherever, whatever station. So Those are my three stations. Thank you so much for being here, Danielle. Thank Danielle. you. Aloha.